I like breadsticks. That is not a suspiciously bland statement for you to utter. Three, two, one. Shocking reveal. I pretend I'm eating desiccated bones. Miss, I was expecting you in the lab today, given that the hazardous chemical spill of last week will have a time to dissipate. I'm sorry, Logan, but Remus cannot come out to play today. Pardon? Remus is currently unavailable. He is not going to stay right there until he fixes this latest mess. Oh, oh but Logan's really smart. Maybe he can help. I am perfectly willing to disclose the subject of the current predicament. Mm, don't get your trousers making a knot. It's Logan. He's not going to laugh. Logan, this is very important. Under no circumstances laugh. Even if it is really funny. Fine. You may enlist his aid, but only because I am not desperate. So, Logan, do you remember how you told me about meat glue and that you could stick almost any two types of meat together? Well, I might have used some of the leather sweat bound around the inside of Snake Butt's hat, and now it stuck to his head and it won't come off. As you can tell, this is an ideal situation. So the meat glue has stuck Janice's hat onto his head. What have you tried so far to remove? The contrary cobra is being unreasonable, and he won't let me use knives, chainsaws, concentrated sulfuric acid, scalpels, or hat-eating termites. Meat glue is in essence an enzyme. Perhaps denaturing the enzyme would allow the bonds to be released. That would totally work, if not for the insoluble and irreversible protein augmentation. Did you just say irreversible? No, he said insoluble and irreversible. This might be a more complex problem than I originally thought. Oh, please, take your time. So, we got the hat off your head. I deem the experiment successful. Ah, uh, not experiment. Um, application of science. You want me to bring the rule book so you can add something about meat glue? You melted my hat. Yes. Yes, we did. It was an ingenious bit of problem solving on Remus's part. Rather than trying to release the bonds of the meat glue, Remus came upon the idea of using a strong alkali solution to dissolve the wool fibres that made up your hat. What Logan means is that we took great care and consideration in the state of your head in the process of removing the headwear and not rendering it down into a gloopy mess. Your head, I mean. The hat is a lost cause. You melted my hat! But, really critically and importantly, not your head. Ooh, science. Indeed. Woo for science. Oh, and who might you be with the rather dashing hat? Ah, surprise snake! Hello, Roman. What sinister trickery is this, making me think you were someone new? It might surprise you to learn that this was not my idea. By which you mean it was your idea? By which I mean Remus has happened to my hat. And Logan. And science. Oh. So this is serving as replacement until Remus can remedy the situation. You are braver than I thought then, leaving Remus in charge of making a new hat. I also enlisted Logan to supervise. Though, that might have been further error on my part given his participation in the destruction of my old hat. Here is your brand new and approved hat. I hated my old hat exactly as it was. There are teeth inside my hat. Sharp teeth. To hold your hat on your head. Logan, I am not deeply disappointed that you have failed to curtail this particularly terrible idea. At first I did not see the benefits of furnishing a hat with denticulation, but Remus convinced me that they would serve to ser secure your hat very effectively to your head. <laughs> we nearly got him, Logan. Here's your real hat. Real being a subjective term, given our metaphysical existence. Where did it go trim? Because you're fancy like that. A terrible touch. Due to the high conductivity of gold, which is a pertinent property of the metal that Logan failed to mention, Janice's hat is not to be targeted by stray sparks, lightning, Van den Graaff generators, electrical currents, or tasers. Hi. Janice says I should show you some of the pictures in my sketchbook. Well, 
what he actually said was he had just finished eating and so the idea of bearing witness to what fresh monstrosities I had committed to paper was immeasurably appealing. So go show somebody else. But you guys are somebody else. <laughs> so there we've got a reverse mermaid. <laughs> And there's a fairy cake made of real fairies. And look, there's one of my unicorns about to go and disembowel one of Roman's unicorns. <laughs> and, oh, there's one of Virgil back when he lived in the dark side. See, you can tell because he has a popcorn bowl that says safe because I wasn't allowed to touch that one. Oh, there's more of Virgil. What's more of Virgil? Huh. I forgot I drew so many of these. Most of them were drawn with Virgil left. Hmm. It's been too long. I'm gonna go find Virgil and see if he wants to hang out. Bye! Sneaky! <gasps> Remus, don't do that. <clears throat> I was merely resting my eyes. Sure you are. But are you okay? Uh, yes. Should I not be? No. There's a rule about not messing with sleeping sides. But how are you feeling? Not too hot? Not too cold? <sighs> this is an entirely reasonable number of questions given I've just woken up. Do you feel like you want to eat bits of yourself? See, when snakes get too hot, they get really confused and hungry, and sometimes they try to eat their own tail. But you don't have a tail, but maybe you were going to chomp down on a finger or something Remus, and... I am fine. Just a little tired. Eh... Uh... You do not believe me. Fair enough. Uh, what can I do that will reassure you? You could do a cartwheel. Given I have inexplicable soft spot for you... Like the bit of a baby's head where the skull hasn't formed yet. I still feel that you are trying to take advantage of my fondness. There will be no cartwheels. But if it will set your mind at ease, you are welcome to join me for some tea. Nogan, how in the snot do you put up with the killjoy in the cardigan? You are referring to Patton? Yeah, I tried to join him for baking, but Virality didn't want to let me add any interesting ingredients like ground up snails. Or spell out swear words using the chocolate chips. Or cut the cookie dough into funny shapes. Ugh. He bores the pants off of me. Remus, the rules. I was speaking figuratively. <sighs> I am wearing pants. I can confirm. I am not glad to hear it. Double sucking standards. Patton forgets his pants, on camera no less, and it's quirky and cute. I want to let some air around my bits, and suddenly it's a matter of public indecency. Deep, look, come over here. I heard raised voices and came to investigate. Yeah, it's brilliant. Virgie. Don't call me that. It's proper vexed, it's Sneaky. Me and him were hanging out recently and got to reminiscing, and it turns out that maybe me and Sneaky weren't 100% honest about some little things. Funny things, like if you eat an apple seed, it'll turn into a tree in your stomach. A common piece of misinformation, often delivered for humorous effect. Exactly. Except. I kind of forgot all about it, and Sneaky, well, he's not the best at telling the truth at the best of times, so hmm, Virgil never got the joke. Should I intervene? Don't you dare, the excrement's about to hit the fan. <laughs> years! I've been avoiding eating citrus and milk in the same meal for years because I was scared the two would mix and curdle in my stomach, because that's what you told me would happen. Stop looking so damn pleased with yourself. You have to admit, it is a little bit amusing that you believe that for so long. Shh. Hey, Virgil, ask Janice about showering in a thunderstorm. Treat her. <laughs> now seems as good a time as any to confess that if you're in a bath or shower during a thunderstorm, you are definitely going to get hit by lightning. <laughs> That's not true. And bananas don't turn poisonous if you freeze them in their skins. <laughs> Cannot believe the two of you that you'd let me carry on thinking these things. <laughs> on that note, go on. I feel I ought to mention that the phrase is nerve-wracking, not, as I might have told you, nerve-wrecking. What? <laughs> I hope Sneak Boy's got his running shoes on. <laughs> hey, nerd. I meant it in a good way, like book smart with smart glasses to match and... It is an adequately accurate form of address. What do you need? Reassurance. Pardon? To sing and dance. But, uh, I hear you've been spending time with my brother. Indeed. He's become a regular visit to the lab space, and we've been working on composing presentations on various topics such as autopsies through the ages and why you should not chew glass. Yes, yes, that all sounds perfectly atrocious. Uh, how is he doing? How is he doing what? In general, how is he doing in terms of his state of mind, creative projects? Is he happy? Remus seems very content. He has many activities and projects that he's currently engaged with, and he's frequently mirthful. 
much to Janice's alarm. Oh, that's great. Really, really great. He speaks of you often. He does. Which reminds me, you may wish to fortify your room against EMP waves. What is an EMP wave? Is it a water thing? Because I already waterproofed my room after Remus's reenactment of what would happen if Super Mario the Plumber sawed it off and left the waterworks of the Mushroom Kingdom to ruin. I shall explain the principles of EMP on the way to your room. Please, lead on. There is a certain side of an amber hue who is currently anonymous. I am helping in that regard as part of my function, and it is not my place to reveal him until he is ready. We have seen very little of him lately, as he prepares to announce himself. He has been planning for weeks. He says he wants to make sure it goes well, and it's not a total middle school librarian mess. It is probably for the best that he's staying out of my way after that comment. Logan, you are exquisitely intelligent, and so it baffles me how you can be so very foolish. Falsehood! That was a completely reasonable level of decibels. However, my statement still stands. Remus has been pestering me for the last two days to take my temperature, with a range of thermometers that you detailed. <sighs> He did not need to know about outdated mercury thermometers, which, as I'm sure you are aware, are very, very toxic. He keeps suggesting chewing through the glass to get at the melty metal goodness. I had good reason to supply him with this knowledge. Really? Yes. Remus has been ruminating on his past misjudgment of your temperature. It has been causing him considerable distress. I thought he was over this. It would appear that this particular intrusive thought is, in Remus's words, sticky AF. I do not know exactly what he means by this term, but I can glean from context that he means that it is persistently reoccurring. And so I sought to offer an alternate point of focus. Has he seemed particularly upset or guilty of late? Yes. So the distraction has snapped the cycle of rumination successfully. However, the less said about rectal thermometers, the better. You could always inform them that since snakes do not have an anus, a rectal thermometer is unsuited to taking your temperature. And we are right back to foolishness! Have you any idea of the misery my life would become if Remus learned that snakes do not have buttholes? <sighs> I shudder to think. So, importantly, have you imparted this particular fact to Remus yet? No. How absolutely awful. I would like Remus to remain ignorant of that this fact, and so you shall not utter a word to him if you know what is good for you. I will not be cowed by threats, Janice. A bribe, then. I shall provide a weekly stipend of crofters in return for your silence. You have only to ask. Why would you agree to something without gain for yourself? I consider us friends. Friends do not need bribery or menace to perform favours for one another. Oh, Logan, I thought you were intelligent. You must recognise that I'm a poor candidate for a friend. I disagree. I did not think you so dim-witted that you would willingly place your trust in a known liar. As you yourself have noted, you are more than just deceit, Janice. There are many aspects to you. You make for pleasant company, and your attention to detail is admirable. You are articulate, and make for a stimulating <laughs> debating partner. I am literally coloured like a warning. A warning not to get too close. Well, you might mark yourself as such. I think no such warning is needed. You may be selfish from time to time, but I've also seen that you go to great lengths to ensure the well-being of others, in particular Remus. The rule book being just one of many examples I could name as evidence of this. It could all be an act. I could be manipulating you to my own ends, to better my chances at being accepted, to tricking you into thinking I have redeeming qualities. Are you? No. I believe that. I do not have to go now. See you later, Logan. Friends! He thinks us friends. Have you ever heard of anything so ridiculous? <sighs> Calm down, Snakey. You'll give yourself an ulcer. Oh, but if you do, can I try to remove it? I'll sterilize one of those claw-grab machine things. 
Anyway, why are you all a fluster? Logan's a great friend to have. He knows loads of stuff and he's really funny and he'll even pretend that he's not looking or bothered when you're drinking pure ammonia in the lab. Even if you use a crazy straw. I do not need friends. They cause compromise and concession to my plans. And even then, when you think you can depend upon one, they don't stay. And so I am better off without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except you are talking complete fecal matter. I'm your friend, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm right, and you know it. So stop lying to yourself that you don't have any friends, because at the very least, you're stuck with me. I'd be rid of you in an instant if I could. Sappy sneak. Perhaps I will indulge Logan's flawed notions of friendship. For a little while, at least. We, do we don't talk, talk about, about that. that. But, if you were wondering, snake skin tastes better than pork scratchings, but not as good as spider skins. Now, now I'm hungry. I'm going to go find some to eat. And I am going to go and find some wine that desperately needs drunk, because I do not want to think for one more moment about why Remus knows that. Remus. Here. I thought at high time you have your own rule book. What? No, I don't want it. Pardon? I hate it. Take it away. I don't want you to stop writing rules for me. They help. So you give me that book and I will throw it in a river and then I'll conjure up a whole bunch of book-eating piranhas and then I'll explode up the fish for good measure. Ah, there has been a misunderstanding. This is a book for my rules. I have seen these scraps of paper, bits of napkin, the occasional section of wall that you use to denote the rules that I should obey. And I thought at high time we give it proper acknowledgement in the form of a book. Don't scare me like that! I thought you were giving up on me! That's supposed to be a snake. It looks like a bit of sad spaghetti. I'm an accomplished artist, but I left the rest blank for you to fill in, as I assure you have plenty of ideas of what could be drawn. <laughs> Your Grace, do you have a mint? Hmm? In the spirit of the holidays, I have a gift for you. Janice helped me come up with something that you might like. It is concentrated, concentrated sulfuric acid. I evaporated sulfuric acid and then put the remaining acid through a further distillation process to refine an extremely potent formulation. Mm, this is great! I am glad that you like it. It seems redundant to mention that this acid will eat through almost any metal. I think you may be well aware of the destructive capabilities of this substance. And so, Janice has also advised that I take this opportunity to remove myself from any further connections with this gift, as it is yours now, and I cannot be held responsible for what you decide to do with it. That's really good advice, because I'm going to ruin someone's day with this. Or make cocktails. Or make cocktails that ruin someone's day. <laughs> this is amazing. Thanks, Deep Blue. Janice, I have a gift for you. The Encyclopedia of Poisons and Antidotes. Is this your way, Logan, of informing me that you might have let slip the existence of more poisonous substances to Remus? Belladonna has a fascinating history. <sighs> Thank you for the heads up. It's not at all appreciated. Logan, present! A uh, pen? Yep, a pen. I have many pens, Remus. Not anymore. I stole them. Because this is the pen you should use. Always. It is smart and appears nicely weighted. It is a good pen. It is a good pen. As long as you don't use it more than three hours at a time, or for more than eight hours in a 24-hour period. If you do, it then becomes a very bad pen, because it delivers a high voltage shock to the user. You need to remember to take breaks, and not work too hard, and not let work take up your whole day. So you better not work too hard, else you'll get zapped. This is unconventionally considerate, Remus. I extend my gratitude. Logan, it is not the gift-giving season, yet you have proven difficult to match with a suitable gift. Oh, and so I thought, given your fondness for knowledge, that you might prefer this. I appreciate you, Logan, and everything you've done for Remus, and myself. And so I offer you this. You may ask me one question, and I will answer true. As long as it's not about my toes. Your gloves. They hold no sway in what you say, is that correct? They serve a symbolic gesture for when I'm making an effort to be truthful. They indeed hold no power beyond that. Thank you, Janice. Ah. 
I hope you have a truly terrible time over the holidays. Here, I've uh, been saving the spider skins from shedding for you, since you seem to like them. But if you don't like it, I can take it back and get something better. I'll and... break your nose if you try to take it back. So, you like it? Does a bear with diarrhea make a tremendous mess in the woods? I love it! Oh, good. Just do me a favour and don't tell me what you do with them. Okay. Sneaky face, heads up. Yeah. <sighs> you thought it was real? When it comes to you, I can never tell. What is it? My gift to you. You made me a toy? Nearly. It's a scarf. To keep you cosy. Your favourite colour, too. I hate it. Thanks. Did it just blink at me? Maybe. <laughs> Remus, is this scarf going to strangle me? Should I make the mistake of attempting to wear it? No. Small mercies. I told it not to. Joe, card for you. It sings. Thanks. It's all. <laughs> it's a two-part gift. That bit's from Sneaky. Really? Yeah. He knew you'd hate it. That's why it's a two-part gift. It comes with my bit. Ta-da! A paper shredder on the side, it's a wood chip. an industrial shrimp paper shredder it'll blurry that card plus anything else you have lying around that you don't want anymore like say a whole pile of invites you know sneaky he's never going to admit he was wrong about it but this is his way of kind of confessing that maybe he wasn't all that clever sending oh, you all those invites i get it now hmm. plus a paper shredder super handy to have around it'll get rid of pens and gloves and rules you didn't like and evidence and thanks for this it's great hmm. you're welcome Hey. Yeah. What can I do for you? I like the gift from you and Remus. Hmm. I'm very upset to hear that. Was there something more? I thought maybe we could have a conversation. It's kind of about you. Go on. We... We both made mistakes. Speak for yourself. And it's on me that I didn't realise that when you said everything was my fault, you were lying. Because that's what you do. And then, eventually, when you said it actually wasn't all my fault... You did not believe me. Anxiety tends to think the worst of situations and jump to the wrong conclusions. And it didn't help that I learned that all the times that you made me feel better by saying everything would be alright, that everything was okay, they were all lies as well. White lies, I guess you could say, but lies all the same. So I took it to heart that you were unremorseful, unsympathetic. It made it hard to trust in anything you said or did, even when you were being sincere. I meant for you to feel that way. I know you didn't. And I think I understand you better now. Things aren't right between us, not by a long way. But, uh, the first difficult conversation is over and done with. Like ripping off a plaster. You are brave. You are not at all braver than I. Starting that conversation, Virgil. Prince Boring, there you are. What can I do for you, Duke of Disaster? Ooh, I like that one. Here, me do thing. I have learned better than to unwittingly accept anything that you hand me. I only laced your sword hand with laxatives that one time, but okay, I'll show you. Look, see. There you are with your katana and you've just killed the dragon witch and Thomas is about to put a wreath of flowers over you for saving the day and everybody's cheering and look there's condoms full of goldfish crackers and buckets full of fizzy wine to celebrate. This is... It's a masterpiece but you can have it. Happy December. Uh, wait, everyone is here. Where are you in the picture? There's me with some defibrillator paddles about to restart the dragon witch's heart so you can bite off your head. <laughs> A true masterpiece. I'm sorry to say I do not have anything to give you in return. No biggie. I kind of sprung my gift on you like an unwanted bowler at Aunt Patty's birthday party. <laughs> Still, I want to return the favour. I will need time to think. No you don't. Just make the first thing that comes into your head. Here. World's worst brother. It's just what I always wanted. <sighs> Ahem. Scarves do not get tea. Scarves also do not sulk. Hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> Jingle bells, Roman smells. Remus, <laughs> can't you sing something nice? What about one of the classic Christmas tunes? Uh, we see kings of Orient Tower. Yes, oh yes, that one's lovely. Star of wonder, star of light. Hmm, we'll skip straight to the good bit where the third king reveals his gift for the little kitty baby G. <clears throat> Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume. Breathes a life of gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying. Sealed in a stone-cold tomb. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. <laughs> You've changed the words. That's horrible. <laughs> Actually, I can confirm that Remus's rendition is accurate. <laughs> All right. I accept that Remus has instilled within you some form of sapience. It's best to find out exactly how much, I think. Uh, one nod for yes, two for no. Of course, there are two heads. One nod for yes, two for no would not work. A nod for yes and a shake of the head for no. We will establish a baseline. Uh, my name is Rumpelstiltskin. Hmm. Okay. My name is Rumpelstiltskin. Different answers. Hmm. My name is Rumpelstiltskin. Hmm. I do not need to call Logan to figure this out. I can do it myself. Wait. You are a scarf made for me by Remus. One of you always tells the truth and one of you always lies. But you randomise it to further complicate the matter. Oh, who is a cute little contradiction? Yes, you are. Logan, what is that? My book. For book group day. I meant within the pages of your book. A ribbon? Oh, Patton decided he wanted to furnish everyone with a friendship bracelet this festive season. I already wear a wristwatch, so decided to use my bracelet as a bookmark instead. Oh, everyone. How nice. Are you upset that Patton did not include you? Not in the least. Tacky, immature tripe. I could mention to Patton his oversight if you would like. No. <clears throat> I mean, no thank you, Logan. As you wish. Look, here he comes now. Speak of the moral. Hey, you kiddos! Janice! Just the side I wanted to see. What's Remus done now? Hmm? Nothing, I think. I hope. I, I have something for you. Sorry it's late. It took longer to make than the others because I wanted to make it just right. Wait, I have not seen Remus with one. And if I was the last, did you leave him out? No, this was the first one I made. Yeah, and then I ate it. It'll clash horribly with everything I own. Oh, but I tried so hard to make it perfect for you. He means he likes it. <laughs> Remus, I of course know exactly where it is, but by any chance have you seen my staff? Not for very much longer, I won't. <laughs> It's not that Remus melted my staff. To match your old hat. Or that I had to wait for him to stop laughing before he would conjure me a new one. It's not even that the new one lasted all of five minutes before it started to fall apart. My main issue of contention, Remus, is that it fell apart because it was infested with woodworm. Termites, actually. Ow! <laughs> Since we've got a book for them now, I thought we'd do one of Janice's rules today. Eeny, meeny, miny, that one. Ah, Janice does not have to pretend that he only listens to classical music when it's just the two of us. See, as much as he'd like you to believe that he's nothing but highbrow, he likes all sorts of music. I've even caught him tapping along to the radio once. 
Now, I don't mind classical music. Some of them are brilliant. Like, there's a discordant composer, Stravinsky, and he did a whole ballet about somebody dancing themselves to death. Or there's the 1812 Overture, which canonically has cannons. Mm. Anyway, I put the rule in there so that Snakey Face doesn't feel like he has to show off when it's just the two of us hanging out. Oh, but I do know that he puts on Mozart before he's a chess game with Logan. He thinks it makes him a teeny bit smarter and he'll take any advantage he can get because Logan is really good at chess, but Snakey really likes winning. There are several issues with this particular article of clothing that I will list in order of increasing objection. 1. When wearing a kilt, Remus insists on going full Scotsman. I do not find it at all amusing that Remus can completely obliterate Patton's capacity for English with just a few well-timed twirls, however. It makes a refreshing change from all that tedious, moralising tirade that he does. 2. A kilt is traditionally worn with a skein do, Scots for small dagger, worn in the sock. It seems an excellent way to lose a toe. Anyway, Remus does not need an excuse to carry more weapons. Third, and most important, the real issue with wearing a kilt is that when he does so, Remus gets out his set of bagpipes. He assures me they are supposed to sound like the wheezing death throes of some poor unfortunate creature. I... And I do appreciate the irony here. Do not believe him. A new rule for Remus had to be added today. An absence of fire ants is now a prerequisite for hugs. In pockets, in hair, in general. One of Janice's rules. Janice has got to warn people if he's going to take a bath. This is because he takes hours. And you'll hog up the bathroom so long that you'll start to contemplate whittling in the kitchen sink. No matter how much aggro you'd get for that, it's nothing compared to what would happen if you interrupted Janice mid-bath. Please. I have thicker skin than to be affected. I merely played up my upset to demonstrate to Roman that his words have consequences. He very rarely minds what he says. For example, when Virgil first arrived, I found Roman's continuous comments about him just to be the epitome of princely behaviour. As for my own remark in retaliation, well, as the saying goes, if he can't take it, then perhaps he should not dish it out. I do regret alluding that there was an evil twin, however. It did Remus absolutely no favours in Patton's eyes. The lights do need to come to terms that things are much more complicated than just good and evil. Sooner rather than later would be my preference. <laughs> I fear we may have inadvertently upset Janice. You say inadvertently, I say maliciously and with intent. <laughs> Look, Janice likes tea. You know he likes tea. You were just trying to help make him an extra fancy cup of tea. <laughs> you neglected to inform me that gunpowder tea does not actually contain gunpowder. Yeah, I did do that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He throws a hissy fit over every little thing. This is nothing new. Besides, if he was really mad, he'd have stuck the kettle on to have another cup of tea. One that didn't explode in his face. <laughs> but we're still fine, because he's not arranging to make himself a snack. So, you know how he said that we didn't need to worry? Yes. Well, we might need to worry just a little bit. And run. Worry while running. Come on! Janice! Hmm. Patton, you were a regular visitor to the dark side of the mindscape. I, I know, but this is important. I found this by the bin when I was tidying up and, well... It's one of Remus's drawings. <laughs> the corpse has a very good likeness of you, Patton. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. What do we do? You apparently bring scrap bits of paper to me. How can you be so calm? I, I think Remus plans to kill us all. <laughs> and who hasn't contemplated a little murder spree every now and again? He wouldn't. Ah, I see that now is an excellent time to joke. What with you being in such good humour? Hardly a joking matter with our lives on the line. It's a drawing pattern, not a master plan or even a passing fancy. Remus represents intrusive thoughts. He uses his sketchbook to take all the violent and crude and disgusting ideas in his head and move them onto the paper. Here. This is one of many pages of the terrible fates that could befall myself that Remus has drawn. He gave this to me for my birthday last year. And not one of them has come to pass. So you and the others are safe. Or as safe as can be expected with Remus around. 
given that he's all the self-restraint of a five-year-old and can come to chainsaws at will. I guess I overreacted to the drawing. But Patton, do me a favour. If Remus ever offers to show you the darker pages of this sketchbook, politely decline. Preferably with your hands over your eyes and retreating at a rapid pace. Remus, you look worryingly industrious. Hey bro, come sit down! Mm. I'm working on my new blueprints for my confetti cannon. I'm going to make it so that it ignites the confetti. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, first you've got to ignore whatever Logan says about health and safety. Then you've got to check against the rules. Then you've got to see if Snakey's watching. And no, no. Gotta... How do you come up with so many ideas? I just do. Hmm. Normally ideas come to me when I'm pottering about, or in the shower, or creeping about in the wall spaces. But mostly, they happen when I'm like this. I just sit down, and I sketch, and I make notes, and I just let the ideas flow out of me. Let it flow, let it flow, like pissing in the sink. Let it flow, let it flow, you don't even need to think. <laughs> I've tried that. We're dealing in the kitchen? No! <laughs> you always seem to be coming up with something new. Mm. Nothing I come up with is any good these days. Good as in Hallmark card wholesome. <laughs> Boring. Good as in worthy. Well, that's completely different. What? No idea comes fully formed and functional. All of mine are these fleeting, flimsy fragments, but once I get them on paper, I can work at them. And then I can do the poking and the prodding and the tweaking and the twerking to get it to work. Sometimes it doesn't, though. Twerking? Part of the process. It's like, say you've got a corpse, and you want to blow up the corpse like a balloon. So you get a balloon pump, and you pump, 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 pump at it. But the corpse had an, a tapeworm in its intestine in life, and so the intestine's full of lots of little holes. And all those little holes are letting air escape, and it's hitting it like a like hot coach. What are you talking about? It's an extended metaphor. Shut up. Anyway, you can pump, 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 pump at it, and even though it doesn't work, you're still building muscles. So then you turn your attention to the little holes and you start to sew. And at first your sewing skills might suck, but you will get better and better the more you do it. And then one day you'll be using the balloon pump and kabamo! The corpse will explode and necrotized bits of viscera will rain down everywhere. Like confetti! I think I see what you're trying to say. Practice makes perfect, right? Eh, wrong. Perfect's a stupid thing to aim for. It takes too long and there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like something about what you make. Practice makes you better, little by little. Better at actually doing the thing, better at figuring out what goes wrong and fixing it, and better at throwing away rubbish ideas. Despite the desecrated Disney song and the metaphorical corpses... They were desecrated too. Uh, that actually helps. I think trying to be perfect is impeding my creativity. Hmm. Thank you, Remus. Hmm. Any time. And you've helped me out too. I've had a brand new idea for my confetti cannon. Corpse bits! <laughs> That's not against the rules yet. Oh, I wonder if I render down some fat I can encourage the corpse bits to catch fire. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I'm going to be sure to tell everyone you helped. I'd really rather you didn't. Remus is to stop attempting to make me eat sugar mice. Just because I have snake scales does not mean that I consume rodents. What a lone hole. You didn't even try my latest batch. They were all sweet on the outside and crunchy on the inside. Sugar mice, Remus, are traditionally candy all the way through. What you made was sugar-covered actual mice. I like them. Oh, and Remus is not allowed to suck all the chocolate off of chocolate-covered coffee beans and then make coffee. This next one of Janice's rules is super important. Janice is not allowed to lie about whether he feels too hot or too cold. Intentionally, at least. We've discovered, though, that when his temperature gets a bit haywire, he gets really confused. And so, if there's any doubt, there's some extra steps. I'm allowed to wash my hand and very gently put the back of it against his forehead and not steal his hat in the process to better judge his temperature. He's not allowed to bite me during this process, or I get to bite him back. Remus and the undisclosed amber-hued side actually have several mutually beneficial interactions. Remus enjoys confrontation and conflict, and Orange appreciates the opportunity to rant and vent to his heart's content. But Remus delights in the occasional dust-up is a happy coincidence. And of course, sometimes Remus will take it too far, or Orange will become incandescently irked and destroy several sections of our surroundings, but in the dark we have been learning to work together to better understand one another, and to appreciate our unique roles and functions. And 
like some sides I could mention. Smart. Janice, FYI, I used the last of the ice cream to feed Gunk the slime mold, but not so mellow, not so yellow was looking forward to it. So now he's throwing stuff at my head, so I'm going to go hide in the walls. It's a work in progress. I don't actually like getting that tipsy. My fingers get all clumsy and my head gets all jumbled. And then I get the tattoo gun out and everybody's got words to say to me in the morning. But Virgil, after a drink or two, he's really easy to convince to initiate a mini mosh pit. I love that. It's like dancing, but violent. <laughs> I did learn, however, that Anxious Andy doesn't like it if you sneak a dagger onto the dance floor. Or a flamethrower. Now, any time I start dancing, he gets nervous. I tried to reassure him, even offered to be strip searched first, but he protested very loudly and Janice told me to get my trousers back on. You are sure you want to go ahead? You absolutely have to. I said already I wanted to. I thought those pages were personal. They are, but when have I ever been inclined to keep something to myself when I could share it? Janice says that some of you wanted to see the darker pages of my sketchbook. Sometimes I'll get a thought that lingers about, like a fart in a coffin. And the only way I can get it gone is to draw it out. I use the darker pages of my sketchbook to draw out the worst things I can imagine happening. So, um, there's some warnings here for character death and angst. <laughs> Straight off the bat, Janice is dead. <laughs> and look, there's a marker over his grave and it says, Here lies Janice, because he's to see, and he would hate that because of the wordplay. <laughs> And then we've got Patton and Virgil, and Patton is tearing up the card that Virgil gave him for Christmas way back when. And he's saying to Virgil, I don't want your card and I don't want you, and Virgil's all really, really upset. <laughs> you seem upset yourself. Well, yeah, it's all going to the sketchbook. Once I've written them down and drawn them out, they don't bother me as much anymore. Yeah, it would suck mightily if any of them were to come true, but I don't worry about that. Leave the worrying to Annie. I just don't like having one thought in my head. Not when there's lots more horrible things I could be thinking up. Janice, is there something amiss? Mm. It's just that Virgil apparently still has not forgiven the little lies myself and Remus told him when he resided on the dark side. Case in point, our freezer is full of bananas, with the skin still on. In fairness to Virgil, no matter the inconsequential nature of your jests, Learning the true nature of the little lies that he had taken as truths is reasonable cause for upset. I tell him that bananas turn poisonous if you freeze them with the skin still on, and that's what he believes. But when I try to protect him or apologise... <laughs> it is why I ascertain that a truth can be just as harmful as a lie. People get ever so cross if it, they discover that you have been fibbing just a little bit. The trick is not to get caught. I need to work on on that subject. In the interest of offering full disclosure, I have something that I would like to make you aware of, Janice. But I suspect you will not enjoy learning. About Virgil? No, about me. And you. Logan, I am no overreactive, angst-ridden emo teen unable to handle the little truth. Say your piece. I know you cheat during our chess games. Pardon? Pardon? I don't think I quite caught that. When we play chess, sometimes you cheat. You move pieces when it is not your turn or to squares not permitted. You replace pieces on your side even after they've been taken. You also steal my pieces from the board. Oh, silly me. Is that against the rules? It is. But to be clear, I am not angry at you for cheating. How long have you known? Since the second game, when there were too many black pawns on the board. All this time? And you didn't tell me? I don't care that he's your little science buddy. I am going to hurt him. Liar. Oh, I assure you I have every intention of smacking his glasses off his face next time I see him. And that's a lie because I'm not going to let you hurt Logan. Tizzle down and tell me what he did to make you so mad. Me and Logan have not been playing regular chess games. And on occasion I have won. Something that I marked as significant achievement. However, Logan is aware of my little the tricks, and so he has merely been indulging me. So, you're upset because you were cheating at chess, and you thought that Logan didn't know that you were cheating at chess, but he did. Exactly. The Deep Blue has been letting you cheat without comment, not even raising issue with all the games that you've won unfairly. 
I really didn't want to mention that he knew about the cheating because you'd react like this, mad as a cut snake. Which is stupid because you can't be very, very angry at Logan for trying to protect your feelings. Good afternoon, Janet. May I interest you in a game of chess? I am very keen to play chess with you. I know, Remus informed me of such, but together we have come up with a new game that I think might appeal to both of us. It is called Cheater's Chess. I am not intrigued. The game is played with standard chess rules with one important addition. You are permitted to cheat as long as you do not get caught. I feel this will allow me to continue to improve my chess game through having to overcome unpredictable moves and configurations while simultaneously allowing you to hone your skills in subterfuge. I suppose I could find time for a game or two. You want more darker sketchbook pages filled with character death and angst and upset? Awesome! I like your style. <laughs> Look, it's Janice and he's cooked and dead. <laughs> and I drew myself being all really upset because it's all my fault and nobody other than me cares that Janice has gone for good and they all blame me anyway. And nobody can fix it. This one's less funny than the others because it almost nearly happened. But Logan stepped in and saved the day and the snake. And now Janice will let me check his temperature if I get really worried. So it's all sorted out now. I should probably leave the worrying for Virgil. And the lying to Janice. Dark pages of the sketchbook time. <laughs> Which means that there's warnings in effect for character upset and angst. <laughs> so here we have me and Patton and Roman. And Patton's saying that we only need one creativity. And Roman's really happy because he's a singular star now. And Patton is pointing for me to go gone and stay gone. And then we've got the reverse. Roman's upset and devastated because all the creativity has been taken away from him and Patton's trying to give it to me, but I don't want it all. I don't know which one of these is worse. Probably the bottom one, because neither me or Roman are very happy in that one. Yeah, that one would suck not. Are you ready for more darker sketchbook pages filled with angst and suffering and strangulation and fading out and more angst? <laughs> Good. So we've got Patton and we've got Roman and Patton is strangling Roman and saying that he's still not good enough and Roman is suffering and choking and believing what Patton says is true. And then the next one we've got Virgil and Roman and Patton and they're all laughing and having a good time but in the very background is Logan and nobody hears him and he stopped trying and nobody seems to care that he's not there. I think that's enough sketchbook for now. Deep Blue! Do you want to talk about murder mystery books and talk about how we could do it even better than the murderer and not get caught? That sounds agreeable. <sighs> Given how late the hour is, I am certain to stay up much longer. Good night, sleep tight. Hope the bed bugs really bite. Remus, have you put bed bugs in my bed? Nah, just a saying. Very well. <sighs> Remember to kill the lights as you head to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Remus, it's just a saying. Remus, Remus! Hey, kiddo. Patton. <laughs> Janice, that wasn't very welcoming. It was not me. It was my scarf, which has seemed to take something of a dislike to you. But it's so cute and cuddly. Hey there. Yikes! <laughs> I suggest you continue trying to prevent Snack Snack, as it is going so very well. I'm going to sit over there, I think. Aren't you going to say something about the biting? <laughs> How remiss of me. <clears throat> you are not to bite Patton. Thanks, Janice. You don't know where he's been and I'd hate for you to get his little tummy. <laughs> remiss, do you have any idea why Snack Snack seems to absolutely detest Patton? Yes. <laughs> I thought it'd be funny. Patton's all soft and sweet, and so I thought it'd be really fun if Snack Snack hated him absolutely and completely for no reason. But there is a reason, isn't there? It still sees me as some sort of undesirable element messing up his perfect little world, something to be pruned back into a more tolerable form. He wants me to change to fit him better, expects me to change, and I don't want to. 
And I can't even get properly mad at him because then he'll just go and sort of apologise and then I'll seem like the evil one and he'll be right and everybody will go back to wanting to keep their distance. He may have a lot to learn, but Patton is showing signs of starting to understand who and what we are. We gave us the friendship bracelets, for example. An important step forwards. Yeah, but he wants us to play nice and part of the family. Work together in harmony. I don't do harmony. I'm just according to F. I'm supposed to be the fly in the ointment, the splinter between the toes. The gonorrhea in the genitals. A thorn in my side. Yeah, see? You get me. And Patton will too. Liar. Eventually. Why in the name of all that is Thomas would I want to do such a thing? For a start, having a physical teller to him is certain to be taken that I am some form of willing accomplice to whatever havoc he is in the process of creating. But moreover, I do not want Remus forcibly kept within a one metre radius of myself. That he can run away and grant me some personal space is one of the principal reasons I have not broken his legs yet. You thought about breaking my legs? Frequently. But not lately. No. No. Perhaps I can be convinced to revisit the notion. As a special treat. Just for you. Time for one of Janice's rules. <laughs> Janice has to tolerate at least a few nicknames per day. I'm trying to train him to be less sensitive, so he stops going off in a monumental hissy fit over every single little perceived slight. It's not going great. Janice is also allowed to use his staff if you come up with a nickname that he finds completely intolerable. But he should remember to use reasonable force, because if he hits you too hard on the head, you are not going to remember which nicknames are out of bounds and which aren't. Remus! You are going to unglue every single one of those rusty nails from the chairs before somebody else sits down and gets a nasty surprise. Where is our first aid kit? The first aid kits even have tetanus shots. Oh, I figured you would want one. Here's one I made earlier. Remus, is this what I think it is? It's exactly what you asked for. I wanted the anti-tetanus shot, Remus. This, I wager, is just full of tetanus. Yep, tetanus. But correctly and accurately labelled, and I didn't try to inject it into anyone. Look at all the rules I'm not breaking. Wonderful. It's so nice that we're all together. How's everyone feeling today? Satisfactory. Uh, suddenly pressured and I don't know. Uh, can you come back to me? Or not? Not would be best. That's fine, kiddo. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Horny and malicious. Maliciously horny? Grand. Dios. What was that? Egregious. I am feeling egregious. I don't know what that means. Logan, would you care to enlighten us? Certainly. Egregious means outstandingly bad. Oh, Janice, I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> I was not finished. Egregious means outstandingly bad or remarkably good. Wait, what? Janice is using a contronym. Words that are their own opposites. Of course he is. Also known as Janice words. Well, yeah, he just said them. <laughs> oh, Patton. Can't you just answer the question of how you're feeling? I note that you are not putting pressure on Patton to answer. Well, uh, I feel all right. I feel a little on edge. Ooh, like a knife. Remus, put that down. We are all together, and that's wonderful. But it also usually means that someone will say something that someone will not like. And I'd like for us all to get on better. Discourse against the statement does not necessarily indicate dislike for the individual. Dislike might be putting it mildly. Individuals are expected to have differing opinions. Case in sharp pointy point. Patty Cakes over there wants everybody to get on, but I want a great big fight. I'll even provide the nail guns. Absolutely not. Ugh. It'd be a much better way of settling debates. They used to do it way back when. Citation needed. Ages and ages ago. And they had champions and fighting rings and fights, and whoever won the fight was deemed right. Doesn't that sound so much better than all this boring talking back and forth and forever that we do? Sounds dangerous. Even better. Fighting is no way to solve anything. Oh, but I just came up with a really good name for it. 
talking it out. <laughs> That's pretty clever, actually. I wish I'd thought of it. But besides, it's hardly fair. Just because you can win a fight doesn't make you right. That is correct. Combat prowess has no bearing on the exactitude of a statement or belief. Extracting exactitudes is not an exact science. Hmm? He means it is hard to verify the truth. It is easy to establish truth. You just take whatever that snake says and it's likely a lie, no matter what fancy flowery language he uses or apparent sincerity that he claims to have. Don't look at me like that. You might have managed to flatter and fawn your way into Thomas's life, but I'll not let anyone else fall for your deceptions like I did. Patton, you were saying something about somebody uttering upsetting statements. Yeah. Well, I'm delighted to announce that that has not occurred. Tremendous. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. I'm not going to make sure Sneaky doesn't get himself into a tremendous tiz. Smell you later. Sneaky? I am not here. Good. I've got words to say to you, so listen up. Janice, you are my best friend, and I will rip out the tendons of anybody that hurts you. And I know that Roman did hurt you, and despite yourself, you're still super mad about it. But so help me, if you do not stop taking every opportunity to wind up my brother, I am personally going to take a dump in every single teacup, teapot, and kettle I can get my hands on. You heard what he said to me. A completely undeserving attack on my character. I'm not going to ask you to stop lying to me, because that's your whole thing. But you started it. I did no such thing. I heard you call Roman grandiose. I think he did too. So, maybe, just maybe, you're a little bit to blame. So is he, don't get me wrong. The pair of you wind each other up something chronic. And wrecking up the galleries is supposed to be my job. I find it hard to remain civil to your brother when he equates my very core being with the greatest of evils. Not to mention the nicknames. He's forever calling me things that are not my name, most of which are unflattering. So what? You lie sometimes. Roman's got to beat up his butt about that. Ever since he figured out that some of your past compliments were super sarcastic. And he's mad at himself for only just now figuring it out. I will not stop lying. Not asking you to. But if you want him to be more tolerant of your nature, maybe you could be a bit more tolerant of his habit of creating nicknames for people. The creativity thing, part of his nature. It sounds a terrible idea. Of course it is, it's one of mine. <sighs> I'm going to go and have words with Roman now so he doesn't feel left out. <sighs> Jeez, with fleas, all this talking. <sighs> I still think it'd be much more fun to have a fight with weaponry and explosions and shrapnel and infection risk. Ah, Remus, you have returned. Oh, you came back. What words to say? Roman, you are my brother, and I will stab out the eyes of anyone in your way. They don't even have to be in your way. I'll do it for shits and giggles. Sandwich. Oh, go poop yourself. And I know that Snakey did you wrong, and you've got every right to be annoyed at him. But he is deceit. That's the core of who he is and what he's supposed to be. You don't have to like it. You don't have to forgive him. But... The situation is getting daft and boring because every time you and Janice are in a room you keep reminding each other of how much you don't like each other. <sighs> so knock it off. I think, and I'm really scared to be saying this, but I think I agree with Remus. Is it bad that I do as well? I concur with Remus's hypothesis that decreasing verbal aggressions will reduce tensions between us. I guess I could stand to be a little more charming. And a little less beastly. Hell yeah! <gasps> I'm gonna make some bin juice martinis to celebrate! Ew! Vileness in a glass! I have a strong suspicion I do not want to drink whatever that is. <sighs> That's better. Agreeing with Remus always makes me nervous. What are being wet makes you nervous, anxious Annie? You made me tea? Hmm. 
you may not share with me if you like. Good stuff. They don't. 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 I fear my continued association with you has completely eroded my common sense because I'm about to ask you what you're doing. You are mom. <laughs> <laughs> my ant farm got foreclosed by the bank and so now the colony is desolate and landless and wandering. You mean they broke out? Broke out is a better way of saying I left the lid off, yes. <clears throat> They're everywhere. Not to worry, I'm already working on it. <clears throat> Dead Aunt Patty. Because you see, I called them all Patty. <laughs> But you know, I'd be a lot quicker clearing out all the ants if you revoked the rules about pressure washers. No. You used boiling acid instead of water. It was a bad day. <laughs> it was a great day. Oh, Janice had an absolutely excellent night. I had instructed Remus to turn off the lights before he headed to bed, but mistakenly worded it as, kill the lights to which Remus started to bolt over towards the light side, summoning a vast array of weapons and cackling manically. Hmm. Once I finally managed to get my hands on the hooligan and gently explain that side to side was not funny, Patton overheard. I then had to explain to Patton that Remus was in fact making a very funny joke about killing the lights. He did not believe me. The entire thing took hours to sort out. Remus chuckled pretty much the whole way through. Patton, what are you up to? Remus, oh, I, I was just finishing up some cookie dough for cookies. Ooh, can I help? Well, the last few times you've tried to help, the cookies didn't turn out so good. Nah, you lack any sense of culinary adventure. You put marbles in one bag. <laughs> yeah, I was going to give a cookie to Roman, and then he'd bite into it and all see if it fall out. <gasps> and then we could have gathered up all the teeth and made even more cookies. <laughs> I think I just want some normal cookies today, Remus, but uh, thanks for offering to help. You can have some when they're finished? I could help shape them. Uh, you sometimes shape them into... Naughty shape. <gasps> I do. But this time I was thinking maybe just a circle. Really? Really? That sounds like it would be okay. <gasps> Great! I'll go get my cookie cutter. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Remus laughing, which is usually a sign that something terrible is going to happen or something unfortunate has already occurred. Are you well, Patton? Yeah. Remus is helping me make cookies. Avoid the cookies. Got it. <laughs> I shall not go and warn the others. No. I mean, I think these ones will be okay to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Patton, I assume that the fish tank with what looks like a disgruntled dogfish sloshing around inside is exactly what you had in mind. Remus, what are you doing? Helping make cookies. This is a cookie cutter shark. It's a parasitic kind of shark that latches onto other fish and takes circular chunks out of them. <laughs> I'm going to use it to cut out some cookies. Shocking that there is not yet a rule against using aquatic life as kitchen utensils. <laughs> Remus, no. You'll ruin them. But Papa, do preach. You said I could help. Mm -hmm. Patton, might I suggest that we split the cookie dough? That way you can make cookies for the light sides and Remus can make the cookies for himself and me. You'd eat one of Remus's cookies? If you've prepared the batch, I see no issue with it. And there's something of a novelty to eating a cookie cut out by a cookie cutter shark. Well, then, okay. I'll go clear some extra counter space for Remus's shark tank. You're not really going to eat one of my cookies, are you, Sneaky? Of course not. Have fun. Try not to let the shark bite Patton. Ah, see? I made a chart, because no good sense that charts are helpful. These are the names that Janice will tolerate on a daily basis. Sneaky and Sneaky Face and J Anus and Deceit and JJ and Janice if you're being boring. These are the names that Janice is likely to cope with. As long as he's had a cup of tea or a snack or he's maybe won a game of chess with Logan or if lots of sides turned up to his book group or the kitchen isn't on fire. Sneak Butt and Dumbasp and Contrary Cobra and Decepticon and Blackadder and Harvey Serpent. Like Harvey Dent, Two-Face. And then these are the names that you shouldn't use. 
I've redacted them all because I don't really want to utter them again and I don't want to get blamed for their usage. And then there's the names that Janus likes. Like, really likes more than tolerates. He likes to be called Lord of the Lies or Master of Masks or even jokingly, Evil Overlord. <laughs> I don't use these names too often. I don't want Snakey to get an overinflated ego. And I don't want Roman or Patton to hear. It's going to give them the wrong ideas about how villainous we're being. You know what this means? Another one of Janice's rules. <laughs> we tied this one fairly recently. Janice is not allowed to lie and say he sees a spider when there is no spider. Hmm. Even if that is the quickest way to get Patton to shut up or leave when he's being a sanctimonious shithead. Remus! Well, he is. If I have to listen to another one of his long-winded spiels about how all my suggestions are the moral equivalent of skid marks, I'm going to puke in spite. Patton said that about your ideas. I'm paraphrasing. Slightly. Oh, but Janice is also not allowed to use a light source and one of his extra hands to make shadow spider silhouettes on the walls. <clears throat> one of Janice's rules. <laughs> Janice is not allowed to silence Roman just before he gets the best bit of a song. <laughs> no matter how funny it was or how close Roman looked to apoplectic implosion. <laughs> the fact that Janice knows when the best bits of a song are about to come up betrays that he knows a lot more musical numbers by heart than he'd ever let on. Remus. Hmm. Squirmy Worm, there you are. A new nickname. Fantastic. I brewed some tea and you are more than welcome to join me. You know what? I think I will. Wait, that's exactly what I meant. No, it wasn't, but yes, maybe it was. See, normally when you make a pot of hot leaf juice, you want me to do whatever I'm doing really quietly or far away from you. Or very, very quickly. Uh, but today you've got an extra cup, which normally means you want to leach extra body heat. Or company. Or both. So pour me a cup of your hot silly leaf juice. Must address the use of that nickname, however. Squirmy Worm? Okay, thank you, promise. I will never use that nickname again. For the last time, I have no desire for your pinky finger. Well, the offer is always open. But I knew you'd hit the name, that's why I used it. Excuse me? Well... When I use a nickname that you don't like, you walk me on the head with the staff to make sure I know that. But when you want company, you tend to walk less. It's a very helpful indicator for when you actually want people to hang about, or you're just being every type of contrary. Mm. This next darker page of my sketchbook has character death, and body horror, and gore, and angst plenty, And Patton is a cheerleader. Ready? There's Roman, and he's got a sword, and he's chopped off Snakey's head, and Snakey's super dead. And I'm really sad, but too late to stop it. I'm trying to stop this from happening, like really real. But Snakey and my brother, they ain't mates. And then down below we've got Virgil. And Virgil's saying, I never want to see you again, and he's plucked his eyes straight out of his skull. He threatened to once, you know. I was showing him a picture of a bomb-sniffing dog uh, two days away from retirement. Half a bomb-sniffing dog. And Virgil said he was going to pluck out his eyes, and I said if he did so, could I have one to eat? And he said no, and then he kept his eyes in his skull. Spell sport. <laughs> I am not struck with the sudden fear that my day is about to become imminently more complicated. What have you done? Me and Roman have been talking. Oh. Go get the mop and stain remover. I shall not attempt to go and distract Patton from the mess. All of Roman's blood remains within his skin suit. I am not surprised. But my brother did tell me something really, really interesting about snake anatomy. I like where this is going. So, Jan Jan, the half-snake man, give me the deets about what you've got going on below the belt. The day I discuss this with you is the day I go prancing through the light side, congratulating them all on their collective common sense. It is a private matter. Or a matter of private? Remus. I strongly suggest you desist. On a scale of one to corpse, how much trouble am I in if I try to continue this conversation? I have already decided where I will hide the body. Like that's a disincentive. Wait, mine are Romans. Bogan! Hey Deep Blue, Snake is on the warpath, so I've come along to watch. Or help. Or chill from the sidelines. Don't know why he's come after you though. You told Roman. I've told Roman many things of late. Please pick up your pencil shavings. Due to 
conflicts of licensing and copyright, it is very unlikely that Disney is going to take you up on your proposed script for a full-length movie featuring yourself. Please stop mixing up my flavour of crofters with your own. I do not like it. Shall I continue? You told Roman about snake anatomy. I have not said anything on that topic. You made it clear that you were uncomfortable with the details being widely known. Wait, you knew all the juicy stuff about snakes? You didn't tell me? Yes, followed by no. I thought we were buddies. While I value your companionship, I felt that if you were to know these pieces of information, Janice might react in a violent manner. Case in point, his current highly agitated state. And you still didn't tell me? Look how mad he is, it's hilarious! If it was not you that informed Roman, then who was it? Virgil wouldn't. Would he? Why not ask Roman directly? Great idea, but before you summon Roman, I'm taking your staff. Fine. Roman! Well, if it isn't my brother, the nerd, and the Hemi Janus. <laughs> I helped him come up with that one, because it sounds like Hemi Penis, which is what snakes have! Not that such statements have any actual representation upon my personal composition, but how did you come by this information? I was researching snakes. You were researching snakes? You were researching. But why? Look, it can be hard to come up with clever nicknames when you know next to nothing. About snakes. And so I did a bit of light reading on the subject of serpents. I applaud you, Roman. The pursuit of knowledge is something I value very highly. So, I should be braced for a whole slew of new snake-themed nicknames. Delightful. Remus, give me back my staff for moniker correction reasons. Okay. What does he mean by moniker correction? If you use a nickname that Snakey doesn't like, he's allowed to donk you on the head with a staff. Whilst I am exceptionally tolerant to being called things that are not my name, I find my staff offers a quick and concise method of expressing displeasure when I find a nickname particularly distasteful. Can't you just say when you don't like a nickname? Oh. So, let us start afresh. What did you call me? Prince Roman? I don't think I want to say. A success. The system works. Let us hope I do not have to apply my methodology too often. I kind of hope you do. You would. You would. Here's one of Janice's rules. Janice has got to tidy up his own leftovers and not just leave them for the garbage can to clean up or eat. Not unless I get to sneeze on them first. But it's one of my rules that I'm not allowed. I want to show you another darker sketchbook page. This one's a bit boring though because there's no blood or guts or death or anything. Plenty of angst though. There's me, and I'm scrubbed up all nice and clean, and I've drawn a picture of rainbows with some white fluffy clouds. <sighs> Basically sold out everything interesting about myself to make some shit that's got more mass appeal. <sighs> and there's a voice to the side saying, Good work, Remus, you can stay. And I'm smiling because I'm supposed to be happy that I get to stay, but I'm also crying because I've been reduced to something banal and boring, and that sucks. <sighs> and then at the bottom we've got Snakey, and he's saying, It's no use, they hate me, they sent me back. See, he'd got accepted like he wanted, but it all went wrong, and now he has to come back. And he's crying, not even bothering trying to hide it. He looks so crushed, I don't think I'd even be happy that he had to come back. This next darker sketchbook page is a bit newer. Still got a bit of angst to it, though. First up, we got Logan, and he's saying that he's done, and that I am too excessive and too ridiculous, and he wants me to go away. That'd be really crap, because then we wouldn't get to do lab stuff together or read murder mystery books, or have long conversations about corpse decay, or find science bits that'll annoy Janice. Hmm. And then at the bottom, we've got the dark side sugar bowl, and it stays full. This is because Janice filled up the sugar bowl when Virgil left, because Virgil likes to take lots and lots of sugar in his tea, because that annoys Janice. But Virgil didn't come back, and so for a while, the sugar bowl was full. It's not now, though, because Virgil does come back now, not just for book group, but sometimes to hang out. We watch slasher movies and laugh at them, or we play horror games, and we do all that other stuff that the light side doesn't approve of. I'm glad Virgil's got a place that he can do that. Mm. I've got two darker sketches all about Snakey today. There's warnings for drawn violence and gore and angsty bits. Mm. 
feet up at the top. We've got a gloved pair of hands and they're nailing down my hand to a table through each and every one of my fingernails. And it would hurt so bad, but worse, I wouldn't be able to draw or write or create or make anything. And then at the bottom, we've got Sneaky. And he's smirking at me and he's saying, Oh, that is just precious. You actually believed I would not be leaving you at the first opportunity. And then he adds, Enjoy rotting alone in the dark. Janice has told me over and over that he's got no plans to leave the dark side like Andy did. But I'm not an idiot. He's deceit. He lies. And that means that I've got this little niggling concern gnawing at the back of my skull like a parasite. That maybe I've been completely fooled by him. But you know what? I think I'd rather be an idiot than assume that just because he represents dishonesty means he has to be disregarded and distrusted all the time. Hey, Jacepticon. Hey, miss. I just realised. Your staff thingy. He's not in desperate need of repair. Well, yeah, but other than that, it's shaped like a shepherd's staff. Yes. Also known as a crook. A shepherd's crook. So I got to thinking, did you pick that deliberately to further associate with a bad guy persona, or was that maybe a little misstep? I was fully aware of its alternate name when I designed it. It is on purpose. You'll note that there are many pieces of tape on my staff, alluding to the notion that my own crookedness might be on the mend. That's a really great spiel, but you just didn't realise, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the fact that my staff is falling to pieces is because it is being chewed up by your termites. Yeah, termites are pretty terrible for woodstuffs. Mm, you don't say. Logan likes books, right? Yes. Neat, because I was thinking about making him a new book for his notes. Something dollar bound and all fancy like. Might I inquire what happened to his old notebook? Eh. Uh... Then making him a new book does not seem like an excellent way to start making amends. If my calculations are correct, the tanning process should allow me to make him a set of ten, maybe. Tanning process? I'm almost too scared to ask what kind of leather you intend to use to bind the books. Good instinct. Remus. You won't like it. Did you know that human skin could be treated and made into leather? Remus, you cannot use human leather as part of the bookmaking process. Can so. Lots of books have been made out of human skin. It's historical, and Logan likes historical stuff. Just in case Logan is not as enamoured with the notion as yourself, Please check with him that he actually wants a book made out of skin before you start the tanning process. And then they used his skin to make a book as well. I wonder what's written in it. But you can go and see it. It's in a museum. Burke's skeleton is also on display and his body was used for anatomical practice. I find that the grave robber and murderer who sold bodies for medical study was punished in the same way, pleasingly ironic. In the proper sense of the word. What are you two discussing? Hey, Sneaky, me and Deep Blue are talking about all the books that have been bound up in people's skin. It is a fascinating, if somewhat morbid, practice, dubbed Anthropodermic Bibliopeg. Some of the books have survived remarkably well. I do not regret asking. Remus, of particular note was that the author of The Highwayman requested that two of the books were bound in his own skin upon his death. Whoa, that is dedication. Is there any bits of the human body that can be used to make paper as well? Some parchment is also produced using skin. Given that human leather would be considered a high grade, I imagine that it would produce vellum, a term for high quality parchment. <laughs> I can't wait for my sketchbook to run out of pages because I know how I'm going to go about making a new one. Remus, 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 Remus! I love it when you acknowledge my existence at high volume. <sighs> what the expletive have you done now? The lights are up and arms about a blood trail across the kitchen and they cannot find Logan. Deep Blue wanted a haircut. Oh bleep. And I've been researching barbers and I wanted to give it a go and he said okay. He gave you permission to attempt to cut his hair? No, barbers used to do much more interesting things like tooth extraction and bloodletting. <laughs> That's why the barber's pool's got red on it, to represent the blood. Where is Logan? I'm here, 
I was just washing the blood out of my tie. Logan, you seem relatively unharmed. It is not a great relief. There, see? Right as acid rain. By the way, do you want a tooth? It's fresh. I most certainly do. Perhaps you should return it to Logan. Preferably with my not sticking it up the poor sod's nose. I have a full set of denticulation. Then... It's one of mine. I was demonstrating tooth extraction using tools of the period. And bloodletting, with a bowl to catch on the blood, because barbers used to put a bowl of blood in the shop window. <laughs> and then I accidentally on purpose kicked the bowl over. While Remus's historical reenactment was mostly accurate, barbers did not tend to practice on themselves, nor attempt tooth extraction and bloodletting at the same time. That's because they were boring and not as fantastic as me. We've done this one of Janice's rules before, but it's worth repeating. Janice is going to learn to control his temper and not use his staff as a first resort when he's a bit annoyed. There didn't used to be such an issue. Janice has always had a bit of a temper, but he would tend to snap back verbally rather than resort to physical violence when he was annoyed. But ever since that stupid wedding and the grand nuclear fallout of everybody, he tends to give out less linguistic lashings. Which sucks, because it's been ages since we last played Insult Chicken. Insult Chicken is a game I invented, and it's amazing fun. You take it in turns to insult each other, and the loser is the one that gets offended first. <laughs> I'm great at it. Roman likes making up nicknames. I wonder if he might like to play. Remus, 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 Remus! I love it when you acknowledge my existence at high volume. <sighs> what the expletive have you done now? The lights are up and arms about a blood trail across the kitchen and they cannot find Logan. Deep Blue wanted a haircut. Oh bleep. And I've been researching barbers and I wanted to give it a go and he said okay. He gave you permission to attempt to cut his hair? No, barbers used to do much more interesting things like tooth extraction and bloodletting. <laughs> That's why the barber's pool's got red on it, to represent the blood. Where is Logan? I am here. I was just washing the blood out of my tie. Logan, you seem relatively unharmed. It is not a great relief. There, see? Right as acid rain. By the way, do you want a tooth? It's fresh. I most certainly do. Perhaps you should return it to Logan. Preferably with my not sticking it up the poor sod's nose. I have a full set of denticulation. Then... It's one of mine. I was demonstrating tooth extraction using tools of the period. And bloodletting, with a bowl to catch on the blood, because barbers used to put a bowl of blood in the shop window. <laughs> and then I accidentally on purpose kicked the bowl over. While Remus's historical reenactment was mostly accurate, barbers did not tend to practice on themselves, nor attempt tooth extraction and bloodletting at the same time. That's because they were boring and not as fantastic as me. I think Patton's forgotten that it's book group day again. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. When I saw the time I had to book it over. Patton, it is not a delight to see you. Would you care for some tea? The tea not on offer today is a green tea. Light and fresh to welcome spring. Uh, maybe not today. Your scarf, it's curled on the teapot. Yes. Snake's Nick is doing an absolutely atrocious job of being a tea cosy and keeping the tea warm for everyone. But I do see the issue. Snake's Nick, will you please let Patton have some tea? Hmm. Padre, you can have mine. Oh, it's so lovely and warm. Thank you, Janice's scarf. Shh. <laughs> no. Given that out of the last five conversations we have had, four have revolved around what attributes I may or may not share with a snake, and the fifth was the revelation that the leftovers in the fridge were in fact another attempt from you to cultivate botulism and bacteria, I definitely want to hear what you have to say right now. <sighs> Given the shoddy state of my staff, I am sure more repeated percussive impacts will do wonders for its structural integrity. <laughs> so, Jansas, 
Is it true that you happen to have a two-headed <laughs> emblem? <laughs> One might think that a prince would have better manners. Oh, can it, you cad? I'll dunk as many biscuits in my tea as I want. One could hardly call that liquid in your cup tea. It is a glorified milkshake that is perhaps a brief encounter with a tea bag. Pretentious python. <laughs> I hear raised voices. Are you two arguing again? Because I thought I made it clear there'd be a bashing if that kept up. Where'd I put my morning star? He heard us. Do something. Ah, Remus. No need to tarnish your morning star. I was merely assisting Roman with some lines for an addition that Thomas is considering. Roll? That right? It is as Janice says. Uh, so what do you think, Lemony Snicket? More angered inflection on the lines, or is it too much? Given the history between the characters, I think the outwardly directed vitriol seems appropriate. So you weren't really yelling at each other? <laughs> Would I do such a thing? Huh. Okay. But I'm gonna go practice smashing some watermelons. Just so you two remember not to be jerks to each other. Well, go on then. Excuse me? Gloat away that your plan has come to fruition. You think I planned this? Didn't you? It seems the exact sort of thing you would orchestrate in order to get me to accept that lying saved my skull and made me into your dirty accomplice. Again. You grant me far too much credit. No, really. I am hardly the mastermind you seem to think I am. Yes, this was a fortuitous circumstance, and you now have first-hand experience how lying might not be the worst thing in the world, but this was not my doing. As if I'd believe you. Let me put it this way. If you think that this was all part of my plan, do you think I would have Remus quite so determined to turn my hat concave while still Tom upon my head? If you cannot trust in my sincerity, you can count upon the fact that Remus will take any and all opportunity to commit a violence. Hmm, I suppose. And we can both agree that being subjected to said violence is less than ideal. I would not mind too much if you were the one getting the smarm smashed off your smug face. Hmm. The feeling is not mutual. Have I ever seen Remus cry? He once ate so many live cockroaches that he then proceeded to vomit, and he caught my hat in the expulsion, and then laughed so loud and long and hard that his eyes started to water. But he does not cry often, not that I have seen anyway. In his sketchbook, however, he does draw himself with tears. It gives me absolutely no cause for concern.